Hello and welcome back. In the previous video, we went through uh, continuous beam on three supports and we calculated the maximum and minimum bending moment in favorable and unfavorable uh, of the element. Typically, when we are dealing uh, to design a, a roof structure, especially if it is uh, pitched, it can be dual pitched or it can be mono pitch then uh, wind load might be in suction, as you might know. For this reason, I decided to solve one inclined beam, uh, assuming that it's a mono pitch on the roof based on three load cases, dead load, a snow load, and wind load. The difference is that dead load is usually uh, applied to the longitudinal direction of the element. A snow load is usually projected to the ground no matter what the angle of the element is and if the wind is coming to be in suction on the element it will be perpendicular to the longitudinal direction of the beam so three different uh, load configuration are going to be explained in this example in the next video i will model the same beam with rfm to see how it works in a fem analyzes software Assume that we have a beam with the length of L and the angle of alpha, point A and point B. Typically, the dead load is aligned the element and a snow load is given according to the projected to the horizontal direction and wind load is perpendicular to the element. If it is in suction, this will be in this way. You can see that we have three different uh, configuration of the load. I'm going to solve it with general calculation and after that we will go through the load combinations. For this example, I just focus on the bending moment, maximum bending moment in the center of the element and how to sketch the uh, shear force and bending moment for this element and also uh, normal force. Suppose we have a beam, point A, point B, the supports might be different and the length is l with the angle of alpha so the horizontal length will be l cosinus alpha and the vertical length will be l sinus alpha and let's assume that the load is projected to the horizontal direction when the load is projected to the horizontal direction it means that the magnitude of this load needs to be calculated by multiplying q times l cosinus alpha so the first thing is uh, calculating the support reactions. Supports might be different, but uh, calculation is pretty easy. We have AX, AY, and we have BY. Sigma FX equals zero. As a result, AX will be zero. Uh, sigma FY equals zero. AY plus BY will be Q times L cosinus alpha. And Sigma M about a equals to zero so minus q times l cosinus alpha times l cosinus alpha divided by two plus by times l cosinus alpha equals zero as a result by will be q l cosinus alpha divided by two consequently a y will be the same q l cosinus alpha divided by two if you want to sketch the shear force and bending moment Typically, the load should be perpendicular or parallel to the longitudinal direction of the beam. For this reason, first we need to uh, find out what's the magnitude of the load on the element. One simple example or simple method is U times L cosinus alpha should be the same as if you have this kind of load here. And if you want to have the same value, Q star times L. As a result, Q star is Q L Q cosinus alpha. But still, the load is not perpendicular to the element. We have to just project it in two orthogonal directions. So now we have this beam, and the load will be so here is Q cosinus alpha. And if we look at the angles and find out this angle is alpha as a result this will be alpha as well when you project it 
So transverse direction to the longitudinal direction of the beam will be Q cosinus alpha times another cosinus alpha. And the other direction parallel to the element will be Q cosinus alpha times sinus alpha. As a rule of uh, thumb, you can just multiply Q by cosinus power by 2 of alpha and put it as transverse load to the element. And Q times cosinus alpha sinus alpha parallel to the element directly. So here we have Q cosinus alpha power by 2 and we have this distributed load among the element Q cosinus alpha times sinus. Also we need to project these two uh, support reactions to the same direction. It should be in the transverse direction and also in the longitudinal direction. This value is alpha. This was Q cosinus alpha Q L cosinus alpha divided by 2. As a result, this one will be Q times L cosinus alpha power by 2 divided by 2. And this will be Q L cosinus alpha sinus alpha divided by 2. The same goes for the other support. Q L cosinus alpha power by 2 divided by 2. And Q L cosinus alpha sinus alpha divided by 2. Now, as we have support reactions and also the magnitude load, we can sketch the shear force and bending moment. For our example, let's uh, find out some values. Let's assume that the length of the beam is 5 meters and alpha is 36.87, which means L cosinus alpha will be 4 meters. L sinus alpha will be 3 meters. So let's assume uh, for the dead load, typically these structures are with the very light dead load. I assume it's uh, half kilonewton per square meter and the spacing of the beam in the tributary length might be four meters. Uh, if they are timber structures, for sure they are with uh, less than one meter spacing, but just uh, uh, understanding the scope is the target of this widow. QD 2 kN per meter, Q snow 8 kN per meter, and Q wind 4 kN per meter in suction. I start with QD, horizontal length is 4 meters, and vertically it is 3 meters. Let's have this, the other two cases. In the first sketch, we have this 2 kN per meter and the effective length is 5 meters. As a result, the value will be 2 times 5, 10 divided by 2, 5 kN and 5 kN. The other action is 0, the other reaction is 0. Cosinus of alpha will be 0 0.8, sinus of alpha will be 0 0.6. So here, uh, we are halfway of what ex I explained. So we just need to calculate this load. You need to multiply it only once with cosinus alpha. 2 cosinus alpha will be 1.6 kN per meter. And in the longitudinal direction, 2 sinus alpha will be 1.2 kN per meter. Also, the support reactions should be projected 5 times cosinus alpha will be 4 kN and 5 times sinus alpha will be 3 kN. The same here, 4 kN and 3 kN. I start with the normal force. So normal force in the beginning is 3 kN and it's in compression. As a result, it will be minus 3 kN and at the end it will be under tension. So it will be positive 3 kN, negative, positive. For shear force, the same element. The shear force in the starting point of the beam, if we assume that point A is a starting point, it is positive 4, and at the end it will be minus 4, positive and negative. And we can calculate the area of this hatched surface, which is 2.5 meters and it is 4 meters. So 2.5 times 4, 10 divided by 2, 5 kN meter. Now we can sketch the bending moment. Bending moment is 0 in the start and in the center it will be 5 and it goes back to 0. So due to dead load, the maximum bending moment is 5 kN meter and it's positive value.
now we can come back to a snow load apply the snow load on the top this is now projected to the ground and it's eight kilonewton per meter the effective length is four meters as a result this will be eight times four divided by two 16 kilonewton the other one also 16 kilonewton we know that this should be multiplied by cosinus alpha power by 2 so it will be 8 times 0 0.8 and then 8 times 0 0.8 and the result should be multiplied by 0 0.8 again so it, it will be 5.12 kilonewton per meter and this will be 8 times 0 0.8 times 0 0.6 will be 3.84 we need to find out these two reactions in the longitudinal and transverse direction of the beam 16 times 0 0.8 will be 12.8 kilonewton and the other 9.6 the same here 12.8 and 9.6 now that we have everything in the correct direction we can sketch the shear force and bending moment uh, for sure you can calculate bending moment by the equation of ql squared divided by 8 it might be much more straightforward but the target of this uh, video is just to show how it should be sketched if the load is not very uh, a typical value or the supports are uh, arranged differently so here for the normal force it just starts with 9.6 in compression and ends with the uh, 9.6 in tension positive negative similar to the first dead load and then we have shear force starting with 12.8 in positive ending 12.8 negative the other case this is negative and this is positive and bending moment area of this um, shear force will be 2.5 times 12.8 divided by 2 and it will be 16 so it comes to 16 kilonewton meter and then it goes back to zero so m um, a snow positive 16 kilonewton meter and the last one which is under is a wind load 4 kilonewton per meter so here it is very uh, straightforward for the calculation however the support reaction might be a little bit different to be calculated because the load is not um, projected to the ground or to the vertical direction in this case for the wind load uh, the load is not in the vertical direction of our coordinate here but we have a x and a y and b y like the other two cases but here the load has horizontal reaction as well as a result it should be calculated a little bit differently let's write a sigma moment about a equals to zero so it will be four kilonewton per meter times five meters times five meters divided by two plus by times four meters equals two zero by will be minus 12.5 kilonewton so the direction is 12.5 kilonewton in this direction so there are different methods to calculate ax and ay perhaps the easiest way is to project 4 kilonewton per meter in two orthogonal directions in our case so here we have 4 kilonewton per meter and this is our element which is in the angle of alpha and here we are interested in projecting this to these two directions this value is also alpha so this will be 4 cosinus alpha and this will be 4 sinus alpha in other words i can sketch it this way which is 4 cosinus alpha 3.2 kilonewton per meter and the other one is in this direction which is 4 sinus alpha and it will be 2.4 kilonewton per meter for free body diagram ax ay are still ongoing for calculation and this is 12.5 we can write down sigma fx equals zero so ax minus 2.4 kilonewton per meter times five meters equals zero as a result ax will be 12 kilonewton sigma fy equals zero ay plus 3.2 kilonewton per meter times five meters minus 12.5 kilonewton 
equals 0 as a result ay will be 12.5 minus 5 times 3.2 and it will be minus 3.5 kilonewton now we have uh, our reactions by is downward and it's 12.5 this is 3.5 and here we have 12 kilonewton now we need to just project these values like before so this will be 12.5 cosinus alpha will be 10 kilonewton and the other will be 12.5 kilonewton times sinus alpha 7.5 this angle is alpha as a result if you want to project it 12 cosinus alpha which will be 9.6 and we have the other direction 12 sinus alpha which is 12 times 0 0.6 7.2 kilonewton and from 3.5 we have the other two 3.5 cosinus alpha which will be 3.5 times 0 0.8 2.8 kilonewton and the other one is 3.5 sinus alpha which will be 3.5 0 0.6 2.1 kilonewton now we can just sketch the resultant in our case just to make it easier to follow so here we have 9.6 in this direction and we have 2.1 in the other direction overall it will be 7.5 kilonewton in this direction in the other side we have 7.5 and you can see that the member is completely under compression and we have 10 kilonewton here the other side we have 2.8 kilonewton from this part and we have 7.2 from the other case so in total the summary of these two is 10 kilonewton so if you look at the load 4 times 5 meters is 20 and 10 plus 10 is 20 7.5 from the other side is balanced from the other 7.5 at the other end now we can sketch the shear force bending moment and normal force for this beam i put it a little bit upper to finalize it here normal force it starts with 7.5 negative and it doesn't change because we do not have any load in the longitudinal direction of the beam so it's negative then we have shear force starting with minus 10 and it will end up with four times that and here positive 10 the bending moment can be calculated with this hatched area 10 times 2.5 divided by 2 so it will be 12.5 kilonewton meter and then the next one is bending moment and here this is negative as we can see so from 0 to 12.5 negative and then coming back to 0 m of the wind will be 12.5 kilonewton meter but it's negative so here we have all the reactions and now we can go and calculate the maximum bending moment so m for dead load m for live load m for m for snow and m for wind this is minus 12.5 kilonewton meter for the dead load it was 5 and 16. now let's assume we are interested in maximum positive bending moment for us unfavorable is maximum positive bending moment as you can see wind should be excluded and it will be m maximum positive will be 1.15 times 5 kilonewton meter plus 1.5 times 16 kilonewton meter here you can see that the wind is favorable and it should not be counted for calculation that's why in the load combinations you should think about how many critical load combinations we need to consider so it will be 29.75 kilonewton meter and if we are going to check with favorable or maximum negative bending moment if exist or minimum bending moment sometimes it is referred to minimum bending moment so let's see what would be m favorable 0 0.9 times 5 kilonewton meter then plus 1.5 times minus 12.5 kilonewton meter so it will be 0 0.9 times 5 minus 1.5 times 12.5 and the value will be minus 14.25 kilonewton meter so as a result i can write it down 
um, maximum negative or the most favorable action. That's all. You can go through the uh, normal force and also check what the normal force maximum or shear force or uh, what parameter you are looking for. That's the end of this video. And we went through a, an inclined beam, how to uh, apply the load and calculate the maximum and minimum bending moment. In the next video, I will model the same with RFM and we will check how it works in a software like RFM from the global. Thank you for watching. See you next time. Bye.